Since you're going to be taking notes while you watch this, it might be useful to pause it every once in a while to uh, stay caught up so you can write down the notes that you need to do. All right, so computers, huh? Computers 101. This is where we talk about the basics, and we're going to start out by talking about hardware. If you can believe it or not, this is the first Apple computer. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak working in Steve Jobs' parents' garage were putting these together and selling them to different people around town that happened to want computers. Thankfully, Apple did not stay in the garage and became a very powerful company. But what is a computer? Because this is, your phone is, you're watching, it on, you're watching this video on a computer. So many things in our lives are computers. So we're going to define it as a data processing machine. So a computer is a data processing machine. And in order to be a computer, it must do four things. Input data, process that data, output data, and store that data. So if you think about your phone, the touch screen you're inputting, and then something happens you know, inside the phone to process whatever you wanted to happen. And then the screen is also the output. You see what you wanted to get. And then you can also store those apps and different data on your phone itself. So this is what a computer must do to be considered one. What can a computer do? It can follow instructions and complete a series of tasks. But that's about it. Computers are not very smart. They are great at doing particular things, but anything outside of those particular things, and they, they fail. So interpreting unclear instructions, they cannot do that. They cannot think for themselves. They cannot create by themselves. Now, we could have a whole discussion about artificial intelligence and the general artificial intelligence versus specific artificial intelligence and where all that's leading, but this we're not really going to do that in this class. This is just, you know, computers, generally speaking, cannot create or think for themselves. All right, so on your notes, you're going to double click the graphic, and that'll allow you to type in the first box where the keyboard is, and that is called an input device. So go ahead, type in input device, and then click save and close so we can get back out to the notes. So an input device is, is a device that turns human language into machine language. So keyboards, mice, microphones, scanners, cameras, video game controllers, like all of these things that we use to take our world and put it in the computer, those are input devices. So write a few of those down. All right, so let's go back, open up that graphic again. The next thing is the CPU. Notice the arrow input device leads into the CPU. So this is what the processing, where the processing takes place. All right, so a central processing unit, that's what it stands for, so that's your first bullet, is also called a microprocessor, so that's your second bullet, and it processes the data. That's your third bullet. This is like the brain of the computer. An example would be like Intel is a company we all know, and th they have a core i9 right now. Generally, the faster the CPU, the faster your computer operates. And right now, 2 to 3 gigahertz is about where we're at. Gigahertz means billion cycles per second. And that's, we measure the speed of computers using hertz, and giga meaning billion because that's how fast we are. Rather than making individual processors f quicker, they're often just adding more cores. And so maybe you have eight or 16 cores that are helping to manage the load. All right, let's open up this graphic again. So our data goes from our input device into the CPU, gets processed, and then it comes back to us with an output device. An output device turns machine language back into human language. So how does the computer communicate to us? Well, it uses speakers if it's sound, or the monitor, or a screen if it's visual. It can print something, right? You can project it. All of these are output devices because they're how the computer communicates back out to us. Now, unfortunately, the CPU can't remember stuff. So we have to have memory and storage in order to make our computer operate. Main memory's job, so you write this down, is to help the computer run. The computer needs memory to operate. That's main memory's job. Storage's job is to remember our 
data. So if you want to keep all of your files, that is secondary. That's our storage's job. All right, so main memory, we have two kinds, RAM and ROM. RAM stands for random access memory, and it allows the programs to operate. So as you're typing, you haven't saved for a while. Well, it's got to be saved somewhere. It's saved in RAM. All programs need some memory to work. That's RAM's job. And so we typically like more RAM as opposed to less RAM because as programs evolve, they all want to use more and more RAM. And so if you have a lot of RAM, then you don't have to worry about them taking turns with it, right? Like we, you have enough to go around. ROM, which stands for read-only memory, its main job is to boot up the computer. So when you first push power, something has to know what to do. That's ROM's job. It gets it to the point where you are able then to use the computer and then it's done. So you don't want this to change with you. This is like a series of steps and you just want it to follow it. Some of you with Android phones might have heard of rooting your phone where you actually rewrite the ROM instructions and that is a thing. But if you don't know what you're doing, you end up with a very expensive paperweight. So the hard drive, this is our main type of storage. It's included within the computer, and it's either going to be magnetic storage or flash. Magnetic is very cheap, so like if you have a hard drive with one or two terabytes, chances are it's magnetic. Flash is very fast, so like the solid state drives, you may have one of those, but it's expensive, and so you probably don't have as much if you would have bought a similar form in magnetic. All right, let's open up our graphic again. So we can type in main memory. Main memory communicates with the CPU, right? Like as it's processing, it needs to stick this stuff somewhere. That's it, main memory. And then main memory communicates with secondary memory. So as you push save, it moves it from RAM over to your hard drive. So this is how like every computer works. If you think about it, your video game, right? Your game controller, is the input, the, the console has the CPU which is processing the data, the output is your TV, and inside the console you have main memory and you have secondary memory. You know when you bought your PS4 you had to choose did you want 500 gigabytes or a terabyte? That's the secondary memory we're talking about. Alright, so let's talk about storage and software. Computers speak a language called binary code, and binary code is made up of ones and zeros. So a single one or a single zero is called a bit. This is why it's digital, because you only have two choices, on, off, one, zero, yes, no, kind of deal. In order to turn bits into data, we group them in groups of eight, and that makes a byte. And one byte is a letter, number, or some other character. So if you, you can see on the screen here, 01000001 is the capital letter A to a computer. We measure all of our data in bytes, but that gets a little confusing because things get big in a hurry. So we use prefixes to help us to remember. So kilo meaning thousand, so that's a kilobyte. Mega means million, so that's a million bytes. Giga is billion, and then tera is trillion. So kilobyte is our smallest, and text files usually are the smallest types of files, so those are measured in kilobytes. Megabytes are very common. This is where most of our programs fall. Digital pictures and music are all measured in megabytes. Gigabytes, huge programs like operating systems or uh, video games that kind of look like movies or videos, these are all measured in gigabytes because they get big very quickly. And then a terabyte, you can buy hard drives in terabyte size, but I've never heard of a file that is a terabyte in size because it just be so hard to move it around that you'd figure they'd just break it up into several files that are in gigabyte in size. All right, software. Programs and software are coded instructions for a set of tasks, and these have to be just very detailed instructions. Remember, computers are not good at ambiguity. There's two categories of software. The first is application software. This is the, the biggest by far, and these are all the programs that allow us to do stuff that we normally do anyway. So you're using Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint. Those are all application software. You're entertaining yourself by playing Minecraft or you know, some other game application software, right? You're surfing the web, application software. So browsers and games and 
All of these are examples of application software. System software, on the other hand, controls the hardware. So your operating system is system software. Finder or Windows Explorer, these are all examples of system software. An operating system is a program that controls the computer and peripheral devices. Peripheral devices are both the input and output combined. So the program that controls the computer and everything plugged into it, that is the operating system. There's several examples. Windows is an example of an operating system. Linux, Mac OS, Chrome has one for its Chromebooks. If you look at your phone, iOS or Android, right? So there's a bunch of different operating systems. Which one is on your computer? You may have to think about it for a second, but then you can write that last question down.